Welcome everyone. Thanks so much for joining us for the launch of our first ever Zillow New Construction Economic Dashboard. I am Ali Webster, Senior Manager of New Construction Partnerships here at Zillow. And I've had the pleasure of working with many of our nation's top home builders and builders of all sizes for the past 10 years or so. It's been a real, real pleasure. And I am Kadra Evans, Director of Industry Relations for Zillow New Construction. I have been in this lovely real estate industry that we all enjoy for uh, over 20 years now. Uh, and what's interesting is that I have never seen new construction having a moment like it's having now. Let's talk about the moment, Alex. Oh my gosh, we sure are having a moment. My goodness. Uh, lots are calling it the, the golden age of new construction. And for those of us lucky enough to be a part of this industry, what a time to be alive, as they say. Looking at new home sales, they've accelerated up 31% year over year in June. Now, if we contrast that with the existing home market, the latest numbers from May of this year show sales falling 20.4% year over year. If we look at the total for sale inventory, new construction now represents about 30% of for sale inventory. And that's almost 3x the 10 to 12% that new construction generally represents in a more typical market. Now, what is more, maybe the linchpin here, about 90% of homeowners have a mortgage rate below 6%, and 80% are below 5%. Lucky ducks. So what does this mean for builders? Well, builders are uniquely poised to weather this higher interest rate market, especially when compared to resale sellers, because they have the ability to offer various incentives to buyers, including rate buy-downs. This is a tactic that I've seen almost all of my builder partners leverage over the past year or so. Definitely a huge advantage. I would call this builders one existing home zero. In <laughs> Right. Yeah. Uh, as much goodness as we're seeing right now, though, it doesn't come without a bit of warning always. Uh, there are some areas of caution that uh, that are kind of developing in the macro environment, not necessarily new construction specifically, but bigger. We may see some hiccups going into the back half of this year at a more regional level as economists predict more disruption in that regional bank sector. Remember those bank failures earlier this year? Well, experts are really watching it closely and they're warning that other regional banks are not entirely out of the woods. So what does this mean? Well, for new construction specifically, it means that banks will, and they already have been, they've been tightening monetary policy, making acquisition development and construction loans more expensive. So it's something to nibble on there. The other thing that we're keeping our eye on is student loans. So federally backed student loans have been in forbearance since 2019, and they are coming off pause in September. Payments will be starting again for October. Now, the average student loan payment in the U.S. is about $400 a month. So you can imagine that there's going to be a period of time. That's a lot of money. So there's going to be a period of time where borrowers are adjusting to new spending habits, and this may negatively impact housing, especially that entry-level housing that's typical for that age group. Many buyers with these paused student loan payments were able to put that money towards down payments over the past several years, and that may no longer be an option going into Q4 of 2023 and into 2024. So something to definitely keep our eyes on. Absolutely something to keep our eyes on. You know, here at Zillow, we're keeping a close eye on how things develop on, on all these topics and more. So we're lucky to have you, at the at the forefront here, keeping us in the, in the know. Our mission here at Zillow has always been to give power to the people to unlock life's next chapter, whatever that may mean for them. And just as we strive to bring transparency and ease to our consumers, we want to bring that to our partners as well. And that's really why we're all here today. That's why we're so excited to launch this new Builder Economic Dashboard. It's intended to be a place where you can go to find all sorts of information right at your fingertips. What's cool is you can break down the data in a variety of different ways and help pull the insights that might be most relevant to your market, your timeline, your customers, and, and your company. If I've learned anything, it's that no two builders are alike, just like no two regions of our country are alike. So, Kajra, I'm looking forward to spending some time with you this afternoon going through the dashboard and trying to give a sense of what it can do, what its capabilities are. 
We will be sure to share the link to this at the end, and it will also live on our new construction resource page. So easy sharing for the rest of your teams. So without further ado, I say let's div dive into the big picture on housing. Yes, I am so excited, Allie. I feel like we have been waiting for this dashboard for an eternity. And so huge shout out to our econ team who has taken so much time and care in putting this together for us to get into the hands of our partners. I'm, I'm so excited. Isn't it beautiful? It is beautiful. I love yeah. it. Let's jump in. So this first section is price and rent trends. Lots of maps, lots of different visuals for whatever uh, makes the most sense for you. Uh, let's let you can filter it a bunch of different ways. For the demonstration today, let's click in to view zip code maps. I'm a little biased with Denver, so let's pick Denver as our market. Since I'm right there, maps moving a little bit slowly, so let's pick Denver, Colorado. And there are our maps. There's You can see the trend charting at the top. And then we dive into zip code by zip code maps uh, down below. First, let's start with rents. As you can see, when I hover over a lot of these areas, these are really representative of a lot of what's going on in the national market with rents. They're increasing. <laughs> some are positive, some are extremely positive. Look at this, 9.3%. We've got 5.4%. This is year over year gains in rent. That's a lot of rent. And rents are largely to uh, blame for our inflation woes. This, there's been some talk about rent stabilization in recent weeks, and there are predictions that we may see those rental rates flatten somewhat, which is a good indication for these inflation numbers that you've heard so much about. These are the numbers the feds want to see come down. So maybe a little bit of positive news, but still some pretty staggering rent increases over the past year. Now, if we look at the map here on our right, this is representative of home values year over year. For the sake of simplicity, we're going to stick with Denver. Denver has been one of the most slow moving markets in 2023. Yay us. <laughs> we don't, we're not alone in this though. We have some friends that are the slow movers with us. Northern California, Austin, San Antonio, Phoenix. These are all markets that have really kind of stalled in 2023. And you can see these numbers look down 14.3%, down 10%. A lot of these metro areas are just seeing some pretty phenomenal decreases in price over the last year. But for some perspective, many of the markets I mentioned, Denver included, they really saw those prices soaring to unimaginable levels back in 2021 and early 2022. So I would argue that these falling prices aren't because we're in a horrible market. It's really just a market correction back to these more normal levels where the prices really should be. It's just taken a little bit of time and much bigger hit out here. Uh, if we look at a market, I would call Florida maybe the sweetheart of the pandemic and uh, just be just after the pandemic. Let's take a look at maybe Tampa as a Florida market that really represents what's happening in that area. We've got just a booming market. We're still seeing price increases. So 10.7% here. I mean, it's really almost all in the positive number. Look at that 30%, what? 30% <laughs> increase in the last year in this particular zip code. So Awesome amounts of data here to kind of play with and configure for whatever works for you and your business. Let's move on. I love it. Thanks, Kedra. Migration patterns are, are certainly something that we're watching very closely. Now, zooming back out a bit, this next section of the dashboard focuses on rents and the path to home ownership, right? On the left, you'll see rents across the country. And the right-hand map shows the average years to save for a 10% down payment. Now, the two, of course, are very closely correlated, right? The, the more you spend on rent, the less you have to save for a down payment. So if we take a look at our Southern California markets, for instance, that quite beautifully illustrates what we're talking about here. Renters in San Diego are spending 37.5% of their income on rent. Yikes. The map on the right shows that it takes renters in that market a staggering 17.7 years to save for that 10% down payment. That's a lot, of, a lot of years. Now, when you take a deep dive into these markets and the cost of living in each one, it's not surprising that we're seeing people migrate to more affordable locations, especially given the more recent ability to work remotely. Now, opinions, of course, may vary as to whether we think remote work will stick around or not and how that may impact housing. 
but it sure has been interesting to follow these migration patterns so far. We continue to see massive amounts of move outs from markets like Northern and Southern California, like we talked about, Miami, the Mid-Atlantic, places like that. I'm actually a living, breathing example of that. <laughs> Having relocated from San Francisco, where I loved living for a dozen years, to Philadelphia during the pandemic. Now, as far as move-ins, we have your usual suspect markets like Dallas, Houston, across Florida, like you mentioned, Kedra, Georgia, and the Carolinas. Lots of those move-in markets. Now, side note here of personal interest, if you are interested in digging into migration trends in particular, John Burns and his team have put out some really great migration dashboard data lately that I'd recommend you digging into. Now, back to our dashboard here, if you scroll down to the last chart in this section, you'll see that the new homeowner burden, which includes principal, interest, taxes, and insurance, is at a nationwide average of 50.8% of income. And that's after paying the 10% down. <laughs> so I hate to chuckle, but gosh, it's just no wonder that we have an affordability crisis in this country when you look at these numbers. Wouldn't you say, Kedra? Yeah, when you're coupling this in, this insane amount of years to save for a down payment, and then you just have the laws of supply and demand, and there's no supply, it's it's not astonishing that we have uh, an affordability crisis right now. Um, so how do we get out of that? We build. <laughs> it's really on our builders' shoulders to help us get out of this great hole that we've dug for ourselves. Uh, with that, let's move on to the next section here. Let's see what the data talks to tells us about new construction activity. So again, this section allows you to stay nationwide or you can choose a region. And then from there, you can filter between multifamily or single family and then the stage of construction. Whatever you wanna see is really uh, at your fingertips in this dashboard right here. Uh, so let's keep it in uh, United States, but instead of total units, maybe let's break it down into single family units. Whoops, let's, let's zoom on back out <laughs> and see this. Uh, and here we go. So single family units that are started and completed. Uh, this is as recently as March this year. So the black line represents units started, and it shows 861,000 as of March, which is down 2.3% quarter over quarter. If we go to units completed, uh, this is the blue line. It shows 1.05 million, which is an increase. Good news there. 5.4% increase quarter over quarter. So we all know how underbuilt we've been such, since the great financial crisis. These numbers are somewhat promising. As long as builders are able to keep up the pace, We're, like I said, like Ali has said, we are counting on builders to help us build out of this mess. Oh, are we ever? And, and builders have been heeding their call. Thank goodness. Um, let's look, Kedra, perhaps at a few new construction hotspots, if you will. Now, what's cool about this graph is that you can look at either the state or a specific market level. For the sake of this demo, perhaps let's look at two states, maybe Florida and North Carolina. Starting with Florida, we look again at single family permits. We'll see that they're up 11.2% quarter over quarter. And if we were to toggle over to North Carolina, we'd see that single fam family permits are up 19.9% quarter over quarter. That's not year-over-year, that's quarter over quarter. So holy cow, those are big percentage jumps. And now the maps below the chart show the changes in permit activity since 2019. So an important pre-pandemic benchmark. On the left, you'll see all permits and total units. And on the right, we've broken it down again by just single family units. So using our same two states, you'll see that Florida is up 10.7% from 2019 and <clears throat> North Carolina is up about 17.7% from 2019. So look, lots of numbers here, but what these graphs show is that of course, no two markets are the same, but many markets are indeed picking up steam, even when compared to pre-pandemic 2019 levels. So while we still have a long way to go to build the required housing supply, especially given the critically low resale inventory levels we're seeing, activity is certainly trending in the right direction, thanks in large part to builders.
Yay, builders. <laughs> and it's not slowing down. This is your moment. This is your golden age. So Ali's talked a lot about migration patterns. She's talked about uh, where activity has increased and where it's really picking up and trending in the right direction. I really love this next part of, um, of the story because it tells a, a nationwide story of what we've experienced over the last few years. Uh, so the only region that has really grown since pre-pandemic levels is the South, which one would expect. Your, all your usual suspects are in the South. <laughs> uh, we're up 8.3% since 2019 with 408,000 sales. And then below, you can see the breakdown of where the sale occurred, what stage was the was the property in when it sold. The most notable shift you'll see is this growth of unstarted homes. That's this purple line right here. Uh, unstarted homes has increased 95.3% quarter over quarter. It's almost doubled in the last quarter, 60% month over month. These are crazy numbers. But what this tells me is, again, we're going back to that lack of both existing homes and then builders inventory and spec homes. There's just a lack of those as well. They're getting scooped up as soon as they're built. <laughs> and it's causing buyers to have really no other option of building a home, going just to the dirt and starting from scratch. This is a stark, uh, a stark contrast to pre-pandemic data that showed that most buyers were operating with a stronger sense of urgency with their move-in plans. We had data uh, back back pre-pandemic that found that buyers were really looking for something move-in ready within 30 to 90 days. And now you can see just by the data that is shown in this graph right here that expectations are changing, or maybe just maybe it's not even expectations, it's just the way that things are these days that's kind of shifting how buyers are buying their homes. Gosh, it sure is shifting. I, I love that sentiment of going to the dirt, Kedra, starting with the dirt. <laughs> um, I mean, remember those stories coming out of the pandemic, like the, the cost of lumber and other materials along with labor? It felt like every day there was a, a new challenge facing our home builders. This next section of the dashboard here gives us a look at how we're trending year over year, quarter over quarter, and month over month for, for some of those, lumber, labor, all of those. Lumber really took center stage during the pandemic area with a spike of, what was it, 119% from 2020 to 2021. Not a laughing matter at all, but just wild to think back on, on what we all lived through. But luckily, we can breathe a little easier as those prices have fallen back to numbers we saw early in 2021 with a 40.8% you know, decrease year over year. This graph does show those numbers leveling off somewhat, but we're nowhere near the scary numbers we saw in, in 2021 or 2020. Now, this last little section here is builder confidence. Um, and we just got news in June that builder confidence has moved into positive territory for the first time in 11 months. So that's good. <laughs> The, the graph on our dashboard shows the major dips we saw in 2020 to the highest of highs we saw in certain parts of the country in 2021. And then, of course, the nightmare that was Q4 of 2022, and then how confidence has slowly been creeping up in 2023. Now, spending my days working with national builders, it's been particularly fascinating for me to see and to hear how different parts of the country have been evolving at varying paces. So I think what I love most about what we've gone through today and about this new dashboard, Kedra, is that this data is charted by region and it allows us to, to splice data in a manner that may be most impactful, hopefully impactful for each of our builder partners. Um, so I think that about wraps it up. We are at the bottom of the page here, I suppose. <laughs> um, anything else you'd like to add here, Kedra, before we wrap things up? Nothing else to add. Again, I'm just so excited to get this into our partners' hands. It is a fantastic tool. It's fun to use, easy to use, as you could see. Allie and I made our way through it, no problem. <laughs> uh, the dashboard will be updated monthly, so we'll be able to track trends uh, month over month quarter over quarter and year over year as the as things change. Um, but it's really, again, meant to give you just some quick tools to get a glimpse of the industry by region, by state, by zip code if you need it. And we are excited to get your hands on it. Here is a link to our new construction resource page. Expect that, expect the page to be updated within the next few weeks. I would say by the end of July for sure, uh, we'll have this in your hands and you can get to work with it. And thank you so much for joining us today. We'd love to hear your feedback. Any questions you've got, please reach out to us. Thanks. Thank Have a great one.